you ever tried dual extruder 3D printing yet? Today, you're getting an in-depth look at the new GTEC A10M. By the end of this video, you'll see how to assemble it, the quality of multicolor print designs, the pros and especially the cons, and if this printer is for you. Included in the box is the gantry kit along with the bottom kit, two extruder motors, two filament holders, a USB cable and the 240 power supply with the cord of course, a skinny LCD display, a bunch of insulation screws and some extras, some helpful 3D print tools, a micro SD card, a random mouse pad, simple single page install guide, two extra 0.4 millimeter nozzles and two useless samples of filament along with zip ties and some Teflon tubes. Let's put together a 3D printer. 3D printer montage! First, assemble the top gantry and the bottom frame and attach the power supply. Connect the LCD cable and screw it onto the frame. Next, we'll add the two extruders to the top of the gantry, followed by two spool holders. Once all that's done, you can run the Teflon tubes from the extruder to the hot end. Then we can snap the two power cables together. Don't worry, the instructions say it can be done in any order. After that, you can snap the extruder cables into the back of the adapter plate. Now the two extruders can be plugged in along with the filament detector sensors. With the rest of the cords, you can read the labels and connect them to the correct stepper motors and limit switches. To start the test 3D print, put two rolls of filament or the tiny little samples onto the spool holders and feed that filament into the Teflon tubes until they bump into the hot end. Insert your micro SD card, plug in the power cord and flip that bad boy on. On the LCD, navigate to the level corners option so it easily levels the bed. You can slide a piece of paper under the nozzle on each corner to make sure the bed is nice and flat. Adjust your bottom screw so until you feel a tiny bit of friction from the paper in the nozzle tip. Swivel over to print from SD card and select the sample file that came with your 3D printer. The printer will now heat up in less than a few minutes and begin 3D printing a little doggy design with a gradient color change from the top to bottom. And there you go, you're all set up and ready to 3D print in multicolors. Alright, now let's go over the good stuff, the pros and cons of this printer. First up, the pros. It's got an upgraded motherboard, they've adopted the open source GT2560 control board. I also really enjoyed the all-in-one design for lugging this bad boy around. Um, unlike my CR10, who has a little box connected with the umbilical cord, kind of annoying. This one, very nice. Print quality, pretty good, actually. It's uh, not bad for a cheap little printer. I think it really depends on your slicer settings. I was able to get really, really awesome prints, and I was able to get really, really terrible prints, depending on my settings. Uh, speed, so they say that this printer can go uh, 60 millimeters a second. Uh, yeah, so I set it to that, and it did pretty good. You can obviously slow it down if you want better results, or you can increase it to like 100 millimeters a second for terrible results. It really depends on, you know, your what your time constraints are. So I made a print-in-place car design, which came out pretty good. Uh, the tolerances were 0.5 millimeters separate, so it should have no problem, but the printer actually fused them together, so that's not good. And then I also tried to 3D print my screw design, you know, with the screw actually together, but that also melted together. Um, so I ended up doing it in separate pieces with a gradient and that came out really cool. I also wanted to try something in super duper high detail. So I 3D printed some multicolored chain links and some multicolored chain mail, which I teach how to do on my website, ptt.live. And these came out pretty good. Um, I also wanted to try multicolor benchies. You know, you gotta do the benchy. So I did the benchy and it came out pretty good other than this one little layer that, you know, don't know what happened there. But other than that, it came out pretty nice. And then I also 3D printed my benchy in a bottle design. And so I thought it would be really cool to, you know, do a multicolor benchmark for the benchmark benchy. And it came out pretty good, even though this was at a 0.3 millimeter layer height. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I tried many times doing multicolor flexible filaments uh, prints, and it never had any luck. I could never get it to really uh, continue. It would start great and then just fall flat and stop extruding, or the temperature would not stay constant. Um, so I uh, wasn't able to do that. This printer did really great for this multicolor hairy print that I made of this unicorn. And 
I couldn't be happy with her. I think I think it just turned out superb. Um, then I wanted to try some practical prints with this Pet G filament I had, so I 3D printed a Raspberry Pi case for Octolapse, and that one turned out really great. There was some stringing, but you know that just comes with Pet G. But all in all, it sticked to the bed really nice, and it came out pretty good. It does have some little um, kind of scraggly, rough areas, but all in all, um, pretty happy with it. Uh, the warm, the hot end, and bed heat up in just a few minutes uh, so you know two to three minutes and you're ready to rock uh, the bed sticks extremely well it's got like this build tech black matte um, sticker on top of it and um, I'm not used to that I'm used to printing on glass but it is insanely stickyable I could barely get the little dog off the print I mean it's kind of dangerous how how well it sticks but we'll go more over that later um, I think I was just printing a little too close to the bed, so I kind of eased off of that. And, uh, you know, also printing with rafts helped a little bit to be able to get underneath the the parts. Uh, they also have this level corners function, which is great, I think, for newbies, people just getting started. Uh, super simple way to level your bed, and I use that very, very often. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please like and subscribe for monthly 3D print designs and courses and live events over at my website, ptt.live. Uh, and feel free to join our Discord. We have a designer Discord, and you can meet other people that like 3D printing and 3D print design from all around the globe. But let's get into the fun stuff, the cons of this printer. What is this printer not good at? And so uh, let's first talk about the build volume. This build volume is 220 by 220 by 260 millimeters, which is pretty small for me because I like 3D printing really large designs most of the time. But I think it's great if you need to prototype smaller designs or this is your very first printer. This is totally enough build volume here. And here are the sound levels in decibels. Um, I really do think this printer is a little bit louder than the other ones that I've used. Especially if you're running the speed pretty high, it can be pretty intense as far as sound goes, I thought. But if you're running it at, you know, its normal speed or whatnot, it's pretty good. It's about your average printer sounds. <laughs> about as annoying as most printer sound. As far as design, I'm not a big fan of the big hole or fan under the bed. I drop bits of filament all the time and would hate to get little bits stuck down there. Um, I actually didn't have that much problem with it while I was printing with it over the past few weeks but I know it's just a matter of time before something gets stuck in there so I'll definitely have to design something to cover that. As far as bed adhesion I am used to printing on glass on my CR10 and this is more kind of like a build tech surface that came with mine and it sticks so well it's almost like incredibly hard for me to get some of my prints off I think I may be printing too close to the bed, so I've been trying different things and I'm getting used to it, but it is insane how well it sticks to the bed, which is a pro and a con at the same time, so, you know, to each his own. Uh, one thing that I really hate about this printer is that I could not get it to go past like 229 degrees Celsius. It, it would do it for just a little while and then it would say, halt, printer, heat, halted. Um, it was very annoying. Um, tried to do many prints. So I would say if you're going to be printing exotics or anything other than PLA, you may not want to use this printer. Um, it could just be my printer that I have uh, or something in the firmware, but it was incredibly annoying to not be able to actually use the, the hot end as hot as it says it could. So that... Another thing that I'm really not a big fan of when it comes to multicolor printing, and I hope that this style of printing isn't the future of multicolor printing. I don't think it is, but uh, one thing is that you have a huge block of just wasted filament, and it is literally 100% filled in. It is a heavy little brick once it is done printing um, to kind of purge and clean the nozzle before it switches to the other color. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of that and it's um, I'm actually gonna just keep the little bricks so I can try and grind them or melt them down in the future and make some more plastic uh, filament out of it but uh, yeah not a fan of that uh, but you know that's kind of the way you have to do it right now but the filament detection does not work 
Uh, you may have to just turn that on in your firmware, but it would be nice if it actually just worked like it says it should. But that's pretty much the cons. I'll put an affiliate link down below in the descriptions if you want to kind of take a closer look at this printer. But let's go ahead and talk about, you know, who is this printer for? Who would benefit from this type of printer? So this printer costs $259 on the GTEC website plus free shipping. Uh, is it a good bang for your buck for quality, size, price, speed, easeability? You know, who is this printer for? Is it for you? Or, you know, should you buy it? That is the question. And I would have to say, if this is your first printer, this may not be the printer for you. Um, it is a little tricky. Uh, it's, I mean, it's easy to put together, but getting used to multiple color prints um, can be a little tricky if you've never used a printer before. If you are someone who has used printers, you're very comfortable with slicer settings in advanced mode or expert mode, and you're not you know, scared to try new things, this printer is definitely you know, a fun just type of printing to try. Um, you know, there were times where I was very frustrated with this printer, but there was also times where it just worked great and it was very fun to see multiple colors coming out of one printer and it really got my mind thinking of new design ideas and things that I could try and designs I already had that would be really cool in multicolors. So I think it does open up your creativity a little bit, but as far as, you know, budget, it's not too far out in price. The build volume is pretty nice. The speed's pretty great. Uh, the quality is pretty decent. And, you know, so I would say if this is your first printer, probably not. But if you are ready to, you know, try 3D printing with multiple colors and you only want to use um, like a PLA or kind of lower temperature materials, this is definitely a great printer to check out. But if you're someone who wants to do flexibles, um, I would have to say, from my experience, this may not be the printer because of the heat temperature issues I was having. Um, again, it could be my printer, but uh, you know I can only go off what my experience was. So yeah, that's my verdict. Um, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I will get to you ASAP on what you know, you know what I think. So yeah, thanks for watching, and you know stay tuned. We'll have more reviews and more designs coming out soon, and we'll see you next time.